What's in here? Ah, that's the silicone case. Oh, nice. Huh. It's supposed to look like a cat or something. Very nice quality cardboard. display built-in. This is a joystick, a button, the camera, and that's the mounting bracket, the accessories. Here's the cable. So I will use these to connect to Spike Prime. I'm looking forward to test this bad boy. So now let's see what it can do. Okay, face recognition. Let's try it out. I have some kids here. Yeah, pretty robust too. Well, this is just a photo. The cool thing is that the minifigures as well are recognized as faces. Now a classic color recognition. Let's try to track this blue thing. Um, train, click, learning, color ID, one. So you have to aim and click. It's simple as that. I begin to forget. A learning color ID one. Wow, pretty smooth tracking. Learning color ID one. That snaps that. Nice and robust. Yeah. Let's try with object recognition. Let's see if it can really object recognition person. It sees this as a person. That's cool. So it has some built-in classifiers. Person, person, dog, cat, dog, cat, pig, bread toaster. It reminds me of Mitchell and the Machines, where the robots cannot classify their dog and they eventually explode. Weird. How about Baby Yoda? It says dining table. <laughs> Interesting feature is the object classification. So let's train the camera by long pressing this learning 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 okay again I want to learn another one learning 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 okay another one okay click other button to finish fine now this is recognized object three Mm. Okay, let's train the line by clicking here. Click again to continue. Now that the line has been recognized, it seems that okay, if I move on. Yeah, it gives me the direction in which the robot should turn to keep following this line. It's pretty hard to frame everything so it keeps focusing, but yes, it works. It works. But it gets confused. Just one line has to be in the frame. So it can get confused by other spurious lines like these colored tags. Okay. But if we if we mount this camera in the right place on the robot facing down, I guess it's nice. A little of low pass filter, I think it should be added because otherwise the readings are pretty noisy. Now let's write some code. Done. Finally, everything works just fine. Now I. Uh, as you can see here, I'm getting coordinates of the piece, and if I move it, it's not very fast, but that, that's because Python is slow.
Now it's time to replace this adapter with a simple cable. This is a quick sketch, but basically I have to solder the cable from the Spike Prime cable to the Husky Lens cable, which is something I'm going to do right now. Okay, I did it. Almost burned myself to, <laughs> to shrink the shrink tube. Now let's try it out. Finger crossed. I hope I don't see any smoke coming out from the air. Whee! Success! It seems to work. Start the program. I hope to see a big smile here. Fine! Haha! <laughs> it works! Now I have to build something interesting out of it. Well, that's luck. This fits perfectly here. So I just need some screws, some washers, and I'm done. And it's done. I find it pretty neat, and the solution I found is clean, I like it, and the silicone case is nice, it's really nice. Since my desktop is visually cluttered, I had to build this April tag using Lego bricks, because it's really robust to be detected. Well, it's been quite a journey. I still have to find a killer app for this because the MicroPython on the Spike Prime, it's very slow. So I can get something like a refresh rate of less than five, maybe 10 Hertz. That means that any robot based on this would be quite mm, jerky. Someone might ask, which is the difference between the Husky Lens and the OpenMV camera. Well, the OpenMV camera allows you to customize everything in your code so you can write a custom protocol and do whatever you want with it. Well, the Husky Lens, on the other hand, is thought for, I would say, beginners because it handles all the complicated stuff and lets you focus on your application. But as soon as you step out from the standard, you might find yourself needing for more control. So the, que the real question that, that pops into my mind is, okay, what's the real target user for this one? Is the expert or the novice user? Because novice user might not even have the need of such an advanced sensor, and the expert user might want to use something more customizable like the OpenMV cam. It's a really advanced piece of hardware, and it works flawlessly, and it's incredibly smooth. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will post building instructions and the source code for this application on my website or on GitHub. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel and support my work by purchasing using the affiliate links down below. So have fun with your Husky Lens connected to your LEGO Mindstorms. Stay young, keep playing. See you the next time. Ciao!